Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and today I'm just going to give you a brief intro to our new CG50 graphing calculator that does 3D graphing. So I just wanted to show you the 3D graphing because this is brand new and we're very excited about it. Uh, we also have a CG500 CAS graphing calculator that does 3D graphing among many other things. But I wanted to show you the 3D graphing capabilities. So we're looking at the CG50 menu. It's a little different looking than the previous version, CG10 Prism, um, colored menus, things like that, just slightly different. And you'll notice as we scroll down, there are some more menu options here. And we'll be doing some tutorials on all those types of things as we move along. But what we're interested in here is the 3D graph. So I'm going to just arrow on over to that. 3D graph and hit execute. And you'll notice you can graph three different 3D functions up here. And if you want to look at the types that we have currently, you can graph 3D lines, planes, spheres, and also cylinders. So we're going to just kind of briefly look at just a couple of these just so you get an idea. So I'm going to go into the sphere just because it's, uh, I love the way it looks. So when you hit it and you hit execute to go into that screen. Notice you have some choices here. Right now it's currently entered in factor form, so you would enter the different coefficients here. Or if you choose F2 here, you can uh, think about it in expanded form as well. Either way, um, we're going to go back to factor. So you're going to enter your different coefficients. So I'm going to use some small numbers. So you simply enter the numbers you want, hit execute, and it gets them into that coefficient spot. Uh, so we're going to do C is 1, and we're going to do a radius of 2. Once I have all my coefficients in that I want, I'm going to hit set. I'm sorry, <laughs> hit the wrong thing. And what that does, it takes me right back, and you can now see the equation of the 3D um, construct that I was going to graph right here. So, and at any time you want to go back, while it's highlighted, if you hit arrow, you can just go back and change those numbers, and then you hit set again to get you back to the screen. Now I want to draw, so I want to make sure my graph's on. You can see that it is here. It's got a, it's been selected. So we're going to hit draw. It takes a little bit, you know, because it's 3D. So then we're going to see the 3D shape within a um, box. This just gives you perspective. And the thing that I love about this is you can, um, use your arrow to kind of rotate around and get different perspectives of that 3D shape. So this is just really powerful for students to be able to see the different visualizations as you turn that 3D object. What does it look like? Uh, so that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is if we hit G solve, you can this is absolutely amazing. As a geometry teacher, it's exciting for me. What happens if I put a cross section uh, through the sphere, through my 3D object? So when I hit cross, so I did, so what I did there was G solve and cross, and I'm going to hit F1, and I can do a cross section that is a parallel plane to either the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis, and I can switch them. So let's just choose X here, F1, and what it does is it puts a plane parallel to the X, and it's a cross section. And again, let's use our arrow keys. We can kind of scroll around and see that that cross section creates, if you see the yellow, a yellow circle. So the a plane crossing with a sphere, and again, we're just doing different perspectives here, is going to create a circle if you're looking at it straight on. And another thing, if you look here, we have view X, view Y, view Z, you can view it from those perspectives. So this is what the cross section looks like from the X point of view. From the Y point of view, it actually only looks like a line because you're seeing a, a kind of a side there. And from the Z point of view, also a line looking down on the top. And let's go back to our original. So that's exciting that you can see these cross sections. You could also, if we hit exit, you could also come back and uh, graph a plane yourself that's not a parallel to any of the axes. and uh, and see what happens when you cross a plane with a sphere there. So let's go down. Let's just do one more. This, again, is just a brief interest. Let's, let's just see what a cylinder looks like. So first thing I'm going to do is choose my type again. So I'm going to go down to cylinder this time. So we're going to hit execute here. And here it's going to ask me to enter some things, my radius. So let's use a radius of um, 3 for our cylinder. 
and then we're going to hit execute to center it. Um, let's do our Z min and Z max. Uh, let's make them negative two for the min and a positive two for the max. And again, you can play around with these. And I want my cylinder to be centered at uh, zero, zero. So that's where this last thing is. Okay, so everything's good. So I'm going to hit set here, F6. And now you see I have a second uh, equation in here. Now I just want to see the cylinder. So I'm going to arrow back up to my sphere and hit select F1 and that turns off this graph so that I'm only going to come back and see my cell cylinder. So let's hit draw. I could go back and do the sphere with the cylinder and then you'll see a intersection of those two but let's just look at this. So again here's a cylinder and you've got your arrow keys that you can rotate and get different perspectives as you move around this three-dimensional object. And the square box just gives you a uh, perspective so you can see that it is 3D. And just as with the sphere, we can hit um, G-Solve and we can see a cross section. And again, parallel to one of these axes. So let's do Y this time, so F2. And so again, here you see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like if we from head on again, it looks straight on. If I'm looking from the X view, if I look from the Y view, it looks like a looks like a rectangle um, or a quadrilateral. It could be rectangular because it's parallel to that Y axis. Um, and here's what it looks like from the Z. And here would be an interesting: Are they always rectangles, or do they change if I change the slope of that plane? So then, this is where you would want to go back in. Oops, I went to the wrong thing there. Sorry, I wanted to hit ex exit, not menu. This is where you could go in and graph a plane and see what that's not parallel and see what the cross section is. So this is just a brief, this is uh, some of the 3D. Obviously, there's more that we can do with it. I just wanted to show you that it has these 3D capabilities, which are pretty exciting, especially for those of you who are geometry teachers or um, up in the calculus where you're talking about some more 3D shapes. So that's just a brief intro. We're going to be doing a lot more of these. Um, so this is the CG50 graphing calculator.